Hi, my name is Kate Morrow. I'm a visiting research programmer here on the TCIP3 project, and uh, I'll be demonstrating for you today um, some work that's recently come out of the project titled Topology Perturbation for Detecting Malicious Data Injection. Uh, this work was performed with um, other TCP researchers, Eric Heine, Kate Rogers, Rakesh Boba, and Tom Overby. And in the making of this demonstration, uh, we received a lot of help from a couple of our staff members, Jeremy Jones and Prosper Panampabi. So the motivation for this demo is that there's a need to detect bad data in power system measurements. Um, it's been shown to, that it's possible to launch false data injection attacks that could uh, remain undetected by the um, bad data detectors accompanying uh, traditional state estimators. Uh, existing work on mitigating these attacks uh, focuses on either protecting the measurements themselves or leveraging historical data. But here we're demonstrating an active perturbation-based approach to detecting the presence of bad data. And this could be either malicious data injection or simple device failure. Uh, specifically, what we do is uh, use defects devices uh, placed on lines in the grid. Uh, what these devices are, they're modules that get clamped along the transmission lines and can affect the complex impedance on that line. Um, so we use these to um, create predictable, measurable perturbations in the grid. Uh, and we assume that the defects are already installed for other purposes. Our approach doesn't rely on any specific arrangement of these defects equipped lines. So the way, um, the way this works is there's, you start off with a, there's either a suspicion there might be bad data in the system or you've decided to do regular testing um, and then you decide to make this perturbation in the system and then you check the observed values during this perturbation and compare with what you expected the, the changes to be. Uh, once you decide to make th this perturbation, uh, a set of device settings must be chosen for this purpose. Um, and this set of defect settings, we call it a key, and it's chosen from a pre-computed space of all possible keys. Uh, we call this a key space. Um, and this key space is pre-computed based on a number of factors, including Number one, stability. We don't want to affect the stability or resilience of the grid. Um, in our experiments, we restricted key spaces to a 1% loss boundary around the power loss optimum uh, because uh, in our work, we're assuming that the defects devices are already set to uh, provide optimum, uh, to, to minimize the power loss. Um, but we do still have some further work to be done on the possibility of transient effects from these perturbations in the grid. Uh, second, uh, these keys must be secure. They must be these perturbations must be unpredictable to the adversary. So these key spaces must be of a size uh, great enough such that the adversary is not able to guess the perturbation that we're creating. Um, and uh, initial results on, six, we looked at six different systems uh, with varying number of defects equipped lines and we actually found that quite large key spaces are possible with a small number of equipped lines. Um, and lastly, the changes that these perturbations affect must be visible to the people in the control room. So the changes must be outside any noise or measurement uh, error bounds. Uh, and encouragingly, we found that this turned out to be possible even within this 1% loss boundary. So what we'll be showing you here today is the WSCC 9-bus system with three defects equipped lines. Um, and the key that we chose uh, was, was picked out of a subset of the whole key space um, to create at least a 3% change in uh, the vector of power flow measurements. Um, so what you'll see here is the adversary gains control of a communication channel sending measurements from bus six and its two neighbors, bus four and bus nine. And uh, he creates a seemingly high voltage at this bus, um, enticing us to take some sort of control action. Uh, and the one thing to note about these spoof measurements that the adversary is using in the demo is that they're still viable as a solution to the power flow equations. So uh, first, a note about how this is being set up in the lab. Um, the the pre-computed key space uh, came from uh, calculations that we did in MATLAB and PowerWorld on various computers in the lab. Um, in the demo here today, the RTDS um, is simulating the power system, the WCC9 bus, and then it's passing data 
through uh, communication channels that run through the deter experimental framework. Um, and inside this deter experiment uh, setup, we have a, a node that's pretending uh, to be the, the adversary who's launching a man in the middle attack and spoofing this data that we talked about at buses six, four, and nine. And then on the other side of deter, data comes out and goes to our control system, um, which is what the operator would see, which is this display right here. Um, right, so this display here is showing what's going on in the RTDS, and this is the screen that the adversary will see, the man in the middle uh, in the deter framework. Okay, so time, time for the demo. So to start off with, the adversary hasn't gotten control of the communication channel with and all looks well in the world. But then the adversary starts to inject the man in the middle attack. And we're going to see that a seemingly high voltage has been created at bus six. Um, all right, so now that we see that there's a seemingly high voltage at bus six, uh, we're considering taking some sort of control actions. But before doing so, uh, we want to test to make sure that the data that we're making this decision based on is valid. So what we do is we decide to apply one of these perturbation keys. We activate our perturbation analysis system. And so we're affecting changes in complex impedance on these three lines here that are highlighted in blue. And so now that we've affected the perturbation, we see the new measurements coming in and we compare them to what we expected to see. Um, and we see that our expected values don't match, don't, are sufficiently close to what we expected to see, or the actual values aren't sufficiently close to what we expected to see. And so a, a warning is set off. And at this point, the operator would um, investigate the source of the bad data, um, to perhaps try and locate the specific measurements. Um, that's not something that our work is able to do right now. We can just detect that there's bad data somewhere in the grid, but it's something that we're looking forward to continuing with work on. OK, so a couple of points we'd like to highlight before we finish up here. Um, major benefits to this approach. Uh, this perturbation method can detect even stealthy or malicious attacks, because keep in mind that the data spoofing that the man in the middle adversary was doing um, the, the, the data he was creating were still, was still viable as a solution to the power flow equations. Um, secondly, the input devices used to perform this probing, while we've used DFAX devices here, it could be any one of a number of devices. Um, control decisions are taking place on the power grid all the time, and there's probably a lot of good work to be done on leveraging those already uh, existing events to to monitor uh, perturbations and measurements. And then finally, uh, the instrumentation and lab configuration that we use to show you this demonstration uh, is complex. We've got the power simulation happening on the RTDS, and we've coupled it with the cyber simulation in the deter experimental framework. And we've got them talking to each other, and then also to our control computer, which is showing you the display here. Um, and so this, these connections that we've created are reusable and it's going to enable further research on this topic.